guys welcome back this month i started with a lecture series in immunology and in the last few lectures i have covered the basics of immunology in this lecture i will be covering the process of leukocyte adhesion and migration now the circulating blood leukocytes they require to migrate to the sites of tissue injury and infection with the principal aim of eliminating the primary inflammatory trigger and contributing to tissue repair to get the leukocytes to the site of injury or infection an elaborate series of adhesion events occur between the leukocytes and the endothelium thus ensuring that the leukocytes they leave the blood stream only to the inflammatory site the, these series of sequential steps is termed as the leukocyte adhesion cascade in a sequence of adhesive steps the leukocyte as seen here they either to the endothelial wall or the vessel wall they locomote or roll about uh, along the wall to the endothelial borders they get activated as seen here they get activated and then they traverse the endothelium and the subendothelial basin membrane and then migrate to the site of infection now there are three main leukocyte migrations that take place first is the migration of the neutrophils and the monocytes to the infected or inflamed tissue causing inflammation and control of infection second is the migration of the naive t and b cells to the lymph nodes for antigen activation third is the migration of the effector memory cells or the uh, effector of the memory cells to the infected or injured site for cell mediated immunity so these are the three main functions of leukocyte migration one is inflammation antigen activation and cell mediated immunity now before discussing the steps of leukocyte adhesion and migration let us first revise the distribution of the various major lymphoid organs in the body the lymphatic system it is composed of primary lymphoid organs primary lymphoid organs and the secondary lymphoid organs primary lymphoid organs include the bone marrow and the thymus these are the primary lymphoid organs okay while the secondary lymphoid organs these include the lymph nodes and the spleen okay now certain tissues in the mucous membrane layers in the body also act as secondary lymphoid organs these are called as mucosa associated lymphoid tissue so bone and thymus are the primary lymphoid organs the spleen and the various lymph nodes like the cervical lymph nodes the axillary lymph nodes the mesenteric lymph nodes the inguinal lymph nodes uh, and the urogenital nodes these are the lymph nodes and the spleen these are the secondary lymphoid organs as well as there is a third uh, type which is included under the secondary lymphoid organs are the mucosa associated lymphoid tissues these include the pears patches and the lamina propria uh, in the bowel and the valdez ring uh, in the oral cavity and the mucosa associated lymphoid tissue of the lung the mucosa associated lymphoid tissue of the lung so these are the mucosa associated lymphoid tissue present in the mucosa now to find the antigens the t lymphocytes they periodically migrate to the secondary lymphoid organs as shown in the following diagram so here the antigen lies in the pears patches so the leukocytes they follow the steps of migration to the pears patches so that they can attack and kill the antigen all right so this is how the leukocytes they migrate um, to the secondary lymphoid organs now the lymphocytes they leave the circulation by passing through the endothelium endothelium in post capillary venules of lymph nodes and pears patches a specialized endothelium is present which has upregulated adhesion molecules on its surface has seen here these have upregulated adhesion molecules they have highly active adhesion molecules these endothelial cells are rather plump they are fat or plump 
as opposed to the usually thinner endothelial cells that are found in the regular venules. These specialized post capillary venules of the lymph nodes in the Pierce patches are called HEV or the high endothelial venules, right? The HEVs, the high endothelial venules, they enable the lymphocytes uh, circulating the blood to directly enter into the lymph nodes by crossing to the high endothelial venules as seen here. Here is another picture of the high endothelial venules or HEV of the lymph nodes which was given in the Riot's textbook. So here is the high endothelial venule that can be seen with plump endothelial cells and allow the lymphocytes to easily enter the lymph node. Now that we have revised the reasons of leukocyte migration, let's come to the steps of leukocyte migration. As a first step, the leukocytes engage the adhesion molecules in order to slow down. This step is called as tethering and is mediated by selectins. There are various selectins like E-selectin, P-selectin or L-selectin which I'll be discussing later. The adhesion bonds, they dissociate and build over, over and over again. Okay, so they dissociate and build over and over again. Thus causing a slow rolling motion, slower rolling motion over the endothelium. This is the rolling. Okay, now teetering and rolling of the leukocytes, it is further supported by molecules which are called as integrins. Okay, however, the selectin and the uh, inactivated integrin mediated bonds, they are not sufficient to permanently arrest the cells. Integrins, they have to get activated by action of chemokines. So, the chemokines, they are secreted by the endothelium. The endothelium, it secretes the chemokines. These uh, attach to the transmembrane receptors. These are the transmembrane receptors. So attachment of the chemokines to the transmembrane receptors leads to the activation of integrins. These activated integrins then cause the joining of the integrins uh, on the leukocytes along with immunoglobulin superfamily uh, molecules like ICAM1, ICAM2, VCAM1 etc which I'll be discussing later on and thus uh, causing the final arrest, final arrest of the leukocytes. Okay, these bonds are very tight and cause the arrest of the leukocytes and thus finally migration of the leukocytes through the endothelium. So there are various steps are uh, teethering, rolling, activation and arrest. I'll show you in green again. Teethering, rolling, activation and arrest. These are the steps of leukocyte adhesion. Okay, so I'll be discussing in much detail later on. But first to understand completely the leukocyte adhesion steps, we need to know what are the cell adhesion molecules and what are its various types. So as the name suggests, the cell adhesion molecules are involved in binding of one cell with another cell or to the extracellular matrix. The cell adhesion molecules are actually proteins. They are actually proteins. Okay. And they help in binding of one cell to another cell or uh, that is cell to cell interaction or the cell to extracellular matrix interaction. Now the cell adhesion molecules, they can be divided into five categories. The selectins, integrins, immunoglobulin superfamily, mucin-like glycoproteins or CD44 family, CD44 family and fifth is the cadherins, cadherins. I have not listed and would not be discussing one class of cell adhesion molecules here that are the cadherins. So uh, the name cadherins, it comes from the calcium dependent adhesion molecules. All right, so these are the calcium dependent adhesion molecules and they're actually a type of cell adhesion molecules that are important in the formation of adherence junctions, adherence junctions. And these help in cell to cell contact and help in providing the stability of the cell. They help in cell to cell contact and help in providing stability of the cells and they are mainly found in the dermis. As they mainly help in giving stability to the cells, they have no role in the leukocyte adhesion and migration and therefore I haven't discussed it here. So I'll be only discussing about selectins, integrins, immunoglobulin superfamily and the mucin-like glycoproteins that is the CD44 family. 
So first starting with the selectants. Selectants term comes from selected lectins. Okay, the term comes from selected lectins. And what are lectins? Lectins are nothing but the carbohydrate binding proteins. Okay. So, lectins are nothing but carbohydrate binding proteins. So, what are selected lectins or the selectins? These are actually carbohydrate recognizing proteins. Okay. So, uh, the cluster of differentiation of for selectins is CD62. Sorry. Uh, the cluster of differentiation is CD62. And there are three types of selectins. The L-selectin, the E-selectin and the P-selectin. So, the cluster of differentiation is CD62. Uh, CD62L is the L selectin, the CD62E is the E selectin and CD62P is the P selectin. The L selectin is found on the lymphocytes, the E selectin is found on the endothelial cell and the P selectin is found on the platelets as well as on the endothelial cells. And they bind to specific sugar determinants on adjacent cells. So they are sugar binding proteins or carbohydrate binding proteins. All right. Now repeating again, uh, the selectins are proteins that bind to carbohydrates. Thus, what are selectin ligands? These are actually carbohydrate moieties to which the selectins bind to. Okay. The selectin ligands are carbohydrates which can be either glycoproteins or glycolipids. These are carbohydrates and they contain specific Sile Lewis X amol tetrasaccharides. One important example of selectin ligand is PSGL, PSGL1. So what is PSGL1? PSGL1 stands for P-selectin binding glycoprotein ligand 1 okay and why psgl1 is important because it is defective in leukocyte adhesion defect type 2 so you will be discuss we will be discussing it later but you should know that psgl1 is an important selectin ligand and it is found on all circulating uh, myeloid cells and it is an essential ligand for all type of uh, selectins whether be it uh, p selectin or be it uh, be it uh, the e selectin or it be it the l selectin so all types of selectins they bind to psgl type 1 now as a first step circulating leukocytes they engage to selectins in order to slow down this step i told you is called as teethering the step here teethering so here is the E selectin and the P selectin. It can bind to glycoproteins, specifically PSGL1. That is also called as P selecting glycoprotein ligand type 1. Okay, this is the uh, glycoprotein uh, of Sile Lewis X type. Okay, but the L selectin, which is present on the leukocytes here, can bind to addressins like a peripheral node addressin, that is PNAD. That is peripheral node addressin or can bind to MADCAM1 that is uh, the mucosal addressin uh, cell adhesion molecule type 1 that is typical for Pierce patches. So these ligands the, that is the E selectin, P selectin and the L selectin they bind to various glycoproteins. So these selectins are the first step they slow down the leukocytes step called as teethering. Now in the next step, the adhesion bonds, they dissociate and build up over and over again. This uh, dissociation and build up over and over again leads to the slow uh, rolling motion uh, over the endothelium. This step, the rolling motion is further supported by what is called as integrins. So let us learn what are integrins. The integrins, they are transmembrane receptors that facilitate the cell to extracellular matrix adhesion and you should know that integrins they are actually hetero heterodimers in uh, their configuration meaning they have two subunits one is the 
alpha subunit and the other is the beta subunit. So in this diagram which I took from Middleton you can see the, on the right side there is an alpha subunit on the left side there is a beta subunit. So it is a heterodimer that is it is made up of two uh, covalently associated alpha and beta uh, proteins okay or subunits. Now the integrin beta 2 it shares a common subunit that is the beta 2 subunit it shares the common subunit that is the beta 2 uh, which has a cluster of differentiation 18 that is cd18 and uh, there are present different uh, and they differ in the alpha chains that is uh, with cluster of differentiation 11 so one cd18 it can that is the beta subunit can interact with different alpha subunits whether it be cd11a cd11 B, C, D, 11, C or C, D, 11, D. So, a common beta 2 subunit that is C, D, 18 can join with a various, uh, various types of alpha subunit uh, that is it can be either C, D, 11, A, C, D, 11, B, C, D, 11, C or C, D, 11, D to form what is called as the beta 2 integrins. So, beta 2 integrins, they play an important role in leukocyte endothelial adhesion steps and depending on the alpha chain, they can be uh, C, D, 11, A, C, D, 18, C, D, 11, B, C, D, 18, C, D, 11, C, C, D, 18 or C, D, 11, D, C, D, 18. So, C, D, 11, A, C, D, 18 is also called as the lymphocyte function associated antigen or LFA1. The CD11B, CD18 can be call, also called as the macrophage antigen 1 or MAC1. CD11C, CD18 is also glycoprotein 15095 and CD11D18 is leukointegrin. So these are the various types of beta 2 integrins and they have a very important role in uh, leukocyte endothelial adhesion cascade and their defect leads to what is called as the leukocyte adhesion defects type 1 and 3. So beta 2 integrins are very very important to learn because of their major role because of their mutations in uh, the uh, primary immunodeficiency disorder leukocyte adhesion defect. This is the complete list of integrins that can be shown uh, here depending on the various combinations of different alpha and beta chains. Now what is the role of these integrins in leukocyte adhesion? As I told you, the selectin mediated bonds are not sufficient to permanently arrest the cells. What you need is an activated integrin. What you need is an activated integrin to permanently arrest the leukocytes on the endothelium. Now to activate the leukocytes, you need chemokines. You need what is called as chemokines. And these chemokines are secreted by the endothelial cells. Endothelial cells secrete chemokines that bind to specific chemokine receptors that are called as the transmembrane receptors. And these have seven transmembrane domains and therefore they are called as the seven MTRs or the seven transmembrane receptors because of their seven transmembrane domains. So the chemokine binding to the seven transmembrane receptors uh, calls the step called as the activation. Okay. So now first let us learn about the chemokines. So the chemokines that are secreted by the endothelium which help in integrin activation are basically short cysteine amino acid chains. These can be either CC with two adjacent cysteine residues along with or CXC with two cysteine residues separated by amino acids or a single C which can be a single cysteine residue or CX3C CX which, which are two cysteine residues separated by three uh, amino acids. So these are the various chemotactic cytokines or the chemokines that lead to the activation of integrins. So as seen here, uh, they activate the alpha L beta 2 integrin and the alpha M beta 2 integrin. So this is alpha L beta 2 integrin is actually the beta 2 integrin LFA1. Okay, while the alpha M beta 2 integrin is actually the MAC1, the leukocyte function associated antigen 1 or the uh, MAC1 that is the uh, macrophage antigen 1. So, these are the two beta 2 integrins. These are activated by the, uh, by the uh, binding of the chemokines to the seven transmembrane receptors. Okay, and their activation leads to interaction with the superfamily molecules ICAM1 and ICAM2, which I'll discuss later. So, 
what actually happens is with activation of the beta 2 uh, integrins they occur by the chemokine binding to the chemokine receptors this binding takes place inside the cytoplasm it takes place inside the cytoplasm okay and this binding uh, creates a signal which is somehow to be related to the integrins uh, that have an extracellular domain so it is inside the cytoplasm it has to be related to the integrins which are present on the extracellular domain and this process is called as the inside out signaling so the signal from inside to out is called as inside out signaling okay this process is called as again repeating inside out signaling because the signal it gets transferred from the inside of the cytoplasm to the extracellular domain outside now the inside out signal leads to a conformational change in the integrin okay the integrin which was initially bent shaped bent shaped now it becomes straight or extended okay the bent shape of the integrin had low affinity it had low affinity but now in the extended state it has high affinity for bonding thus the rapid activation of beta 2 integrins it causes the integrins to attain a high affinity for bonding okay and therefore now the inside out signaling leading to activation causing high affinity of the integrins can cause the integrins to bind with the various super family uh, immunoglobulin super family molecules like icam1 icam2 vcam1 etc so after rapid activation the integrins bind to several molecules that belong to immunoglobulin super family which provides a tighter bond of the leukocytes tighter bond of the leukocytes this bond is very tight okay and therefore the leukocytes they finally arrest and then migrate through the endothelium i'll not be discussing much about the immunoglobulin super family containing icam1 icam2 uh, vcam etc because they just uh, bond with the integrins to cause arrest of the leukocytes on the endothelium thus helping in their migration to the site of infection or injury so in the end i will just summarize the steps the circulating leukocytes they engage adhesion molecules in order to slow down this step is called as dethrin and is mediated by selectins like l selectin e selectin p selectin all the selectins they bind to carbohydrates that is glycoproteins or glycolipids the most important is thylomycin like glycoprotein that is p selectin glycoprotein ligand 1 psgl1 that is found on the leukocytes okay so the e selectin and the uh, p selectin they can bind to these green green pentagons which are found here that is the psgl1 psgl1 as you can see here are the green pentagons okay so these e selectin p selectin on the endothelium they bind to these psgl1 okay the adhesion bonds they build up over and over again that they dissociate and build up over and over again so this really leads to what is called as the rolling motion or the slow rolling motion okay the tethering and the rolling the tethering that is the joining of the e selectin to the psgl and then the rolling motion this is the rolling motion these uh, are not sufficient to permanently arrest the cells on the on the endothelium that is they do not permanently arrest the leukocytes on the endothelium the endothelial uh, cells they need to permanently arrest by activation of integrins okay so for activation of integrins what the endothelial cells secrete they secrete chemokines okay and these chemokines they interact with what is called as the seven transmembrane receptors so the seven seven transmembrane receptors seven tmr these are the these lead to what is called as the inside out signaling the inside out signaling 
it causes the activation of integrin so integrins here you can see is activated and is now in the high affinity state okay as you can see here it is lfa1 lfa1 as i told you is leukocyte function associated antigen 1 or beta 2 integrin this is activated now and this activated integrin can bind to immunoglobulin superfamily class uh, class uh, molecules that is the icam1 icam2 vcam1 etc so interaction of these integrins with these molecules help in the permanent arrest of the cells arrest and then uh, they can easily transmigrate to the endothelial cells so uh, this was all about the leukocyte adhesion and migration steps that is first is the teethering then is the rolling then is the activation of the integrins and then is the fourth is the arrest and fifth finally is the transmigration of the leukocytes to the site of infection or injury that is the fifth step that is transmigration okay so before ending the lecture, let me introduce the primary immunodeficiency disorder that is a leukocyte adhesion deficiency in which the main defect lies in the defective leukocyte adhesion. Okay, in this leukocytes, they cannot migrate to the site of infection, they cannot kill the microorganisms uh, and thus causing severe bacterial infections and lack of inflammation. So, the leukocyte adhesion defects, they are mainly of three types. The type 1, in which there is mutation in the CD18 or the beta 2 integrins because of the mutation in ITGB2 gene. ITGB2 gene. These, this gene is responsible for formation of beta 2 integrins. As I told you, the beta 2 integrins are the CD18 class. Okay, CD18 class. So, the CD18 along with various alpha CD11 chains, they form CD11, CD18. So, because of defective CD18, the uh, defective or absent formation of CD18, there is absence of beta 2 integrins. And in LAD1, LAD type 1, there is absent CD18. Okay. The type 2 is there in which the CD18 is present. But what is the defect? The defect is in PSGL1. I told you what is PSGL1. PSGL1 is P-selectin glycoprotein ligand 1. Okay, so this is the selectin ligand. And is nothing but a carbohydrate. Okay. So that is a glycoprotein and this defect in PSGL1 is responsible for LED type 2. The third defect is the LED type 3, leukocyte adhesion defect type 3 in which there is defect in beta 1, 2, 3 all integrin types and thus impairs the integrin activation cascade. So what is defective is integrin Activation is defective because of defect in beta 1, 2, 3 integrins and is caused by a mutation in Kindlin 3 gene. Okay, so LAD type 3 is uh, caused by defective beta 1, 2, 3 integrins and thus defect in the integrin activation and is caused by defective Kindlin type 3 gene. Okay, so this was the main three types of leukocyte adhesion defect and it was just a brief introduction. For more details and related questions, you can refer to the lecture named leukocyte adhesion defect. So this brings me to the end of the lecture. Hope you all liked the video. For more immunology videos, follow the link to the playlist named Immunology Made Easy. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel. If you like my videos and want to get regular updates for newly uploaded videos in medicine, kindly hit the bell icon. Thank you.